Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Codus Arcade. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about the various types in Java. So before getting started, I would like to request you people to please like and share our videos with your friends and family and also subscribe to our channel Codus Arcade and press the bell icon so that you get notifications regarding our latest updates. Thank you. So let's get started with types in Java. So there are two divisions or categories of types in Java. The first one is primitive types which are used to store simple values. The second one is the reference types which are used to store complex objects. In the primitive types, the first one is byte which occupies one byte of memory and the range is minus 128 to 127. So we can say that more the number of bytes, the larger the number we can store. The second one is short and it takes two bytes of memory. Its range is up to 32,000. The next one is integers. Integers occupy four bytes of memory and their range is up to two billion. The next type in primitive is long. It occupies eight bytes of memory and with this we can store even larger numbers. Till now the types that you have seen all these types are used to store whole numbers which don't possess a decimal point. For storing decimal point numbers, we have two types which are float and double. Float occupies 4 bytes and double occupies 8 bytes. So it is quite obvious that with the help of double, we can store larger numbers. Then the next we have is the care type which occupies 2 bytes of memory and can be used for storing a single character like ABC or ABC. Finally, we have the boolean type which occupies one byte of memory and it can be used for storing boolean values. Just like we have yes or no in English, in the same manner in Java the boolean values are true or false. Now let us go on to our editor so that we can have a look at some examples to understand better about the primitive types in Java. So I'm going to my editor now and you can see this is my editor and this is a snippet of my earlier program where I showed you how to declare variables and here as you can see this was my variable name my roll number where I load the value 10. Now as I told integers can store up to 2 billion so we don't require a memory of up to 2 billion to store roll numbers. For that we can do it with the help of byte. So we can type byte here and this will suffice it because in byte we have the capacity to store up to 127. So this is okay for storing roll numbers. Then suppose we want to make a variable which keeps a count of the number of views of a YouTube video. For that, let me show you how to do it. I will take the int data type and here I will type number of views is equal to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then I will provide the semicolon. So in this way, we can assign this value to the number of views of a certain video in YouTube. This value looks somewhat confusing. So we can separate it with the help of underscores as you can see here. Let me do it for you. With the help of this underscores you can separate this. Just like in mathematics we separate the larger numbers with the help of commas. In case of Java, we can do it with the help of underscores, as you can see here. So as I told you, integers can hold up to 2 billion, but if the value exceeds 2 billion, suppose if I make it 4 billion, then it will not be able to store this value. For that, what I have to do is, I have to use the long type. So here, I will type long. But still you can see that this error is prevailing and it has not gone. So what can we do for this? 
what we need to do is we have to suffix it with the help of a small l. Now this has no errors and you can see that it is correct. And you can also write small l but the problem is that this small l somewhat looks like the symbol 1 or the number 1. So I suggest you should use the capital L. Next let me show you how you can use the double and the float. Suppose I am trying to save the cost of something into a variable. I will use the double type and here I will take the variable name to be cost is equal to say 49.98 and then I will use the semicolon. But double is a data type which occupies more memory and to store this value we can use the float. So let me take the float and now you can see that it, it has an error. Let me hover over this and you will find the error here and it says provided double required float because this number is treated by the compiler as a double even though we have initialized it to the float. So what we can do is just like we wrote L as a suffix for the long in case of float also we have to suffix it with the help of capital F. Now you can see the error is gone and similarly as we saw that we can write capital L or small l we can also write small f as you can see here. So either we can write small f or we can write capital F both are correct. Then let me show you how to use the character type. We write the name character then we write the name of the variable let it be alphabet and then let me assign the value say small a and then we have to give the semicolon. So you have to note that a single character should always be written inside single quotes and a string or multiple characters should always be written inside double quotes. You have to keep this thing in mind. It is very important. So you can give any other character as well. It can be capital A or it can be capital B. It's upon your choice. It doesn't matter. Then let us go on to the next type which is the boolean type. And suppose if I want to check whether a number is divisible by a certain number or not. In that case, the name of the variable should be something like this is divisible is equal to then we have to assign the value. The value in this case will be either true or it can also be false. So these are the two values true and false and you have to note that the colors highlighted in orange as you can see false, boolean, character, float, long, byte, public, static, void, public, class and package. All these are actually the reserved keywords. That's why they are highlighted in orange. We cannot use this as our variable names. This will produce errors. So this highlighted words in orange are known as the reserved keywords in Java. And if I change this to true also, you can see that it is automatically converted to the orange color. So these are the reserved keywords. And also I want to tell you something that the name of your variables should always be something meaningful. Sometimes we declare the variable names to be n or m or sometimes v or suppose num1. So this is actually a bad practice, rather we should be giving some variable names which are pretty meaningful. In my case, that's why I wanted to check whether a number is divisible by a certain number or not. That's why I was taking the variable name to be is 
divisible. So this is a very meaningful variable name and it actually tells you what actually this variable is holding. So you can easily identify what the work of this variable is. So you should always use meaningful names to define your variables. So this is about the primitive types in Java. In the next tutorial, we will be learning about the reference types in Java. Thank you and happy learning.